some of you may have noticed again, just just me. So we'll see how this gets edited together, but essentially, if I'm reading Jordan's thoughts, I'll be wearing the f off big scarf. Just a handy visual aid to whether or not I'm telling you what I think or what Jordan thinks. Cool. Right. With that said, here are our thoughts on whatever this episode was called. The Mary Shelley episode, let's just call it that, because that's what it is, isn't it? Let's face it. Uh, the Haunting of Villa Lord Byron and Dr. Palladero are a bit alright. I love the banter. He's funny when he rolls his eyes. Love the bit where they both frighten each other. Uh, Mary, Mary Shelley also travelled with the Ape Doctor in Big Finish. Did not know that. That's interesting. I like how everyone is dressed up, but the Doctor just sticks on a nice new jumper. Uh, it's not a jumper, it's a waistcoat. <laughs> Love Greg talking to Posh. <laughs> Trying to talk Posh. Round to death, he's put with question mark and explanation mark. Oh, time travel rule. No snogging Byron. What are the group doing? Blind Man's Bluff? Orgy? In modern day, that dance would be called the Okie Koki. Lord Byron is a bit of a male tramp. The butler is so sassy. Graham going to the little boy's room. I relate to that. I need to pee all the time. What a waste of a good vase. Probably Ming. Nice house. It's actually the Tyler's house from Rise of the Cybermen. Mm. Poor Graham can't find the bog. <laughs> Bet Scott, Scott thought that was a spider. Ghost maid. Interesting that the house doesn't make sense. Reminds me of the Shining Hotel. But not really making sense. Ghost girl. Lord Byron heading on the doctor. There's lots of explanation marks in this. Bloody hell. Ryan ruining the piano. Doctor Polidori is grumpy. One of Byron's daughters was Ada Lovelace, the woman in Spyfall. <laughs> Ryan with his fists up. A bony hand. A companion getting strangled. I like my companions to get strangled once in a while. The butler destroyed it. The north is very strange. Who keeps a skeleton in their bedroom? Amateur Byron is a weird one. Waterloo. Q Abba. Reminds me of the first Doctor with his plume hat in the a reign of terror. Lol, ghost made with food. If Graham talks any louder, he's going to wake the good-looking Doctor up. Sleepwalking. Hate it when that happens to me. I think I'm seeing dead people. He's put in quotes. He's put Byron hiding the woman, but I think he means behind the woman. Nice one, Jordan. I've been in places with that sort of effect. Portsmouth High Street, the upstairs of McDonald's and Haven. I've slept walked through more than a screen once. I opened every cupboard drawer in the kitchen. Bones in Jars reminded me of the Hammer Horror Frankenstein movie. A little less gory though. I think Hammer Horror is Frankenstein's appropriate. <clears throat> my Spectre reminds me of Mr. Burns as an alien in The Simpsons. Oh my god! With... Hold on. I think that's nine exclamation marks there. Cyberman with three exclamation marks. The Lone Cyberman with five exclamation marks. Looks amazing with four exclamation marks. Great design up close. Chibnall has a thing for half covered Cybermen. <laughs> this design is miles better than the Cyberwoman. Hashtag justice for the Cyberwoman. The Doctor's speech about not losing anyone to the Cybermen. Um, she was probably thinking of Bill and Adric. Oh my god. Broke the maid's neck. Not gonna lie, thought he was going to kill the baby too. Let's split up, said no one who survived a horror movie. An emotional Cyberman with only one exclamation mark. Another good speech which finally lets Jodie prove she's the Doctor, she's the summit of the mountain. Look forward to next week. Okay. My fault. Although hopefully they'll be edited together. <clears throat> they do talk like poets. Mary Shelley, D. 
did it on her mum's grave. Just a weird piece of trivia that came into my head when she first started talking. Um, as soon as the door started knocking, I was like, the doctor? Mm -hmm. And yeah, obviously it was. Uh, good build up. I know it. It was the doctor when the door opened. Time appropriate outfits. It's one of my favourite things about this series. I know. I'm, I'm odd. But yeah. I like time appropriate outfits. Oh, she's so excited to meet famous people. And just like, they were all just pissing about. Which is pretty much what they were like. The romantics. Bunch of weirdos. Graham gives zero. And I love it. The Doctor, don't do a thing. The Doctor, immediately does thing. Pretty standard Doctor. I put, ooh, ghostly. Love Graham. Just, just Graham. Graham's great. I put, ah, spider. Ah, don't worry, it's just a hand. What does that say about me as a person? That I'm like, oh my god, spider. Oh, the severed hand. Phew, thank god for that. <laughs> I put, ooh, and you know the bit where that girl's talking to Yaz? Um, for that, I've just written. But I put, yep, hand, when it was coming down, that was good. What's a Sonic going to do when she's just like sonicking walls and stuff? Uh, Byron is giving the Doctor straight doomy eyes, and the Doctor gives zero which is fantastic. <laughs> Ryan was pretty funny in this episode again. Uh, I like that him playing the piano, <laughs> and the Doctor's, nah, goes on a bit. The one-liners, yet again, for me, hitting. Um, <laughs> Ryan's bants. Draw! That was pretty funny. Also, one song. Made me, made me chuckle, not gonna lie. Um, oh, and then when the butler slammed the hand, I was like, good shot! Which is my note, and my note under that is ditto, because that's pretty much exactly what the doctor says afterwards. She licked it. She picked up, put a hand in it, she licked it. It's great. I love that. Um, I don't see why she sonicked it after she'd already licked it, but it's a step in the, good, in the right direction. And then when Lord Byron was going on, I was like, calm it, man. Dude, just chill out. Both hands missing. Ooh. I wouldn't eat that, Graham. Just random food appearing from two creepy looking ladies. Would not eat that. I love the whole loop thing. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, the, the loop thing remind, reminded me, especially the way they shot it was a bit like Labyrinth. Thought was really good. I love Labyrinth. Perception field was cool. And hells yeah, Cyberman. From day one, you rewind back on the video, so I'm sure it's in one. As soon as we found out it was going to be a Mary Shelley episode, what did me and Jordan say? It's going to be a Cyberman and that. Before that, actually, I stopped writing these all points later. I'd, I'd stopped my stream of consciousness. That's how good this episode was. I couldn't keep writing my stream of consciousness. I was too distracted. That was how phenomenal this episode was. Um, for the first time in a long time, I managed to get my girlfriend to watch it with me, and it's so good, she wants to watch the end of the series. So, that's a great review. Um, I then got my second watch, because I watched it again when my dad was watching it. So, two watches in <laughs> so many days. I loved how throughout Byron was flirting with the Doctor, she just gave zero shit. Um, I like the incomplete slash broken side man. The design of it was so good. I really liked it. Um, I also liked the concept of it actually having some sort of emotions. The inhibitor was broken or whatever, but it was still going, not like in the Davies one where they just exploded immediately once. Emotions. Um, oh, that neck snap was brutal. Oh. Pre-Watershed? Chills. Chills, that was. Um, or as I call it, Tuesday. That is so close to what I say all the time. And it's an ongoing joke I have, which <laughs> I've I, I just, just worn my heart to hear it here. I don't know if I took, it's probably a joke I've picked up from somewhere and that's probably referencing it, but I don't know. But, like, 
I always come up with the most ridiculous scenarios, or I hear someone else describe the most ridiculous scenarios. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, it's just another Tuesday. Nice bit of poetry when the Cyberman's saying some Shelley stuff. That was cool. I loved the fact that the Doctor was putting her foot down about saving Shelley because it's not one life, it's time, and she's got to protect the time stream as the last Time Lord, essentially, again. Um, you can't talk down a Cyberman. That bit was so good. When she's like, you had kids? And she's like, oh yeah, 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 I had kids. I killed them all. That was brutal. That was good. No win for the Doctor this time, which is good to see every now and then. Uh, she knows she can't change time. When you know when she gives away the thing, I'm sure lots of people will be like, well, why'd she do that? But she knows that the cyber, she can't stop the Cybermen from rising. She's just got to defeat them afterwards, which is great to see her do that. Um, good, good ending. I liked it. The so Jordan said it as well, and I agree with it. The bit when she was saying, I can't lose someone else. If you think about how close it's been for the Doctor, all of these events have happened pretty quickly since she became she. So Bill's death's going to be pretty fresh on her mind. I mean, Adric as well, obviously, but you know, Bill's. For, as far as the Doctor's concerned, it's probably been like four months in our terms, so that's going to be very fresh. Um, yeah, that was all I can say was that that was, I guess. Out of ten, just my favourite episode this series. There, yeah. that's uh, our thoughts on this week's episode. Might be my favourite episode of Chibnall's era. Definitely my favourite episode this series. The only thing it's got to fight with is a woman that fell to earth. I like them for different reasons, but this episode was everything it needed to be. It was scary. It was tense. It was funny in moments. It was character building, dri well driven. Um, Yaz yet again didn't have a lot to do. Neither did Ryan in this episode. Graham was the only one that had something to do. I'd be, I'm curious to see whether or not they're going to pick up on those two ghosts ever again. Um, it was about Cybermen, which a very Shelley episode should have been, as we'd said earlier. So that was brilliant. Um, I'm happy with what they did with the lone Cyberman. That was set up, and the design was so good. Yet again, if you look at are how to bring back Cyberman video, Cyberman videos, which I think is up. Um, we talk about Ivy Side. I think I mentioned it, and we both discussed the idea of this like half-built Cyberman, and how that would be terrifying. And here's the evidence. Clearly, Chris Chibnall watches our videos, which is lovely and reaffirming. Explains why pretty much all of our criticisms from last series have been fixed. I'm happy with this episode. It gets a solid. Good job out of 10 from me. And please like, subscribe, share, find us on Twitter, and all that jazz.